so <laughs> the caregivers have always been under attack um, and nobody's speaking up for us so I guess it's up to me and currently what's going on is the uh, corporation the corporate grows are sicking townships on their own caregivers that live in them because they want to you know they want to regulate them harder and this is coming from the top all the townships that are doing it are doing it through their board of trustees who's getting these edicts from above from you know obviously the lobby the lobby obviously wrote these and it's basically catered to every township and it seems like as as we progress on forward these these uh these ordinance adoptions or um you might want to call them uh, amendments to the ordinances are are getting more brazen in their language and more restrictive and more obviously in violation of the 2008 medical marijuana act so it's there's really nothing we can do about it because every time you know somebody thinks oh well i got the law on my side so i'm going to take this to court and fight these guys every time that we do that every time that that has happened the courts have ruled against the caregivers there's only a couple of times when they ruled in our favor and them rulings were basically nullified by more things in the ruling or whatever so here we are once again getting attacked you know like i'm 50 years old just like the hash bash and every year of my life i basically had to fight to make sure that i can keep growing my plants you know like i from the time i was a little kid learning about marijuana i've always wondered why is this stuff even illegal and you know the, the people that wanted to make it illegal well they were doing it at the behest of corporations that you know didn't want it to be the medicine and they didn't want it to be the industry they wanted they wanted petrochemicals and garbage pills to be the medicine so they you know that was the forces that made marijuana illegal and that's why they had enforcement against people that grew it but then you know the the tides have changed and now now it's uh you know it's not desirable to arrest people for marijuana anymore politically but somehow it's still happening and now we have regulations moving towards legalizing marijuana everywhere and guess what the people that were like me that were the ones that stuck our necks out growing during full prohibition doing all the things to try to help legalize marijuana all throughout prohibition raising money um doing rallies doing petition drives i've been doing petition drives to legalize marijuana since the 80s all right and i'm getting sick of it and here this we're at the end of the road now there's nothing we can do about this caregivers are done this is the final blow to the caregiving system because quite frankly if you followed every rule that they've they've enacted uh to kind of mess with the caregivers you got to collect taxes from your patients you got to charge your patients because you can't sell to nobody else um now you know my local township wants to add a bunch of new things on there like patients can't come to your house but somehow your house is considered a business and they're going to call that a patient care center but patients can't come there though and then they're also talking about how you're going to have to you know register with them and buy a registration card and have an inspector come and look at your stuff well this isn't what we signed up for this isn't what the law says the law says that you're not supposed to be able to get scrutinized further by any other municipality <clears throat> so you know i'm gonna go to the hash bash and i'm gonna basically have this speech that i'm talking about right now this is basically what i'm i'm willing to say in front of the audience um, there's supposed to be over 600 people going and there's about 1500 people that are interested in going and I, I highly recommend anybody uh, that watches my channel please go you know um, and what you know this is in Ann Arbor Michigan where it's been going on for 49 years they didn't do it last year because I guess a they felt like it was a little bit risky the coronavirus was just starting to freak people out you know and they basically didn't want to be the the first people to be like oh we're just going to go out there and still do what we do even though there's a pandemic or whatever so besides that um there seemed to be like this 
notion coming from, I don't know, the Democrats and other people in the movement that basically, hey, we won. What are you guys doing? We don't need to have the hash bash anymore. The hash bash is a protest against prohibition. Well, the prohibition's over and, you know, what's the point? Well, I'll tell you what the point is. It's never going to be over. Right now, there's a fight going on between the corporate marijuana, you know, facilities who can grow thousands of plants, unlimited. Basically, they can grow as many plants as they can afford licenses and facilities for, all right? And they're up there on the high mountain pointing down at, pes- you know, those pesky little caregivers who are growing 72 plants. They want them gone. They're like, go get rid of them. What are you going to do, arrest us? I mean, put us in cages? So according to, you know, what I what I remember from the medical marijuana uh, rules and what I've seen happen is if people get caught going outside the rules, like selling weed to somebody that's not a not their patient or just any number of things that are strictly enforced in the medical marijuana law, you know, if you do any of those things, they'll still charge you with a felony. Whereas if you look at the recreational marijuana law, there's nothing in there that can give you a felony. So it's kind of weird. It's like now all of a sudden it it might be more desirable for you to not be a caregiver because you could get caught selling weed to somebody and it won't be a felony. You get, get, what the hell? You get caught with too much weed, it's not a felony. You get caught with too many plants, it's not a felony. If you're a caregiver, that's all felonies, I guess. Now, now the townships want you to keep track of plant counts and give them information about whose plants are whose. And my God, <laughs> you know, I've been growing in the same house for 10 years straight, but they're going to need to come out and do an inspection and make sure my, uh, you know, my electric and plumbing is good. Um, but look, guys, so while the hash bash is going on simultaneously, we're also going to have this virtual hash bash going on that uh, is being conducted by Governor Whitmer, um, the Attorney General Whit, uh, Dana Nessel, uh, Steve Irwin, who's like your Democrat uh, congressman in the state house here in Michigan, and he's, you know, he's always been the legalization advocate in the Democratic Party of Michigan, but to me that doesn't really mean nothing. That means zip. Because they've never done anything. They've never put a floor vote on anything in this state. They've never even considered it. And he's never even put a bill together and and written one that I know of. If he did, it was nefarious as hell. And by the way, he spearheaded the, um, the writing of the Medical Marijuana Facilities Licensing Act. And also was part of or if nothing else a heavy influence on what happened to what what used to be my legalized and then it turned into what is the coalition to legalize marijuana petition which ended up being the law that we voted on and legalized ma- marijuana in Michigan he was responsible for the corporate giveaway in there he was the one that spearheaded the lobbyist to to write the uh, medical marijuana Facilities Licensing Act in in Lansing. They basically came in and wrote the the law. <laughs> they wrote it. The the lobbyists, you know, the people from big corporation, big corporate interests, big money interests that want to take over the marijuana industry in Michigan. They were the ones that got to write the Medical Marijuana Facilities Licensing Act, and in turn, that changed the petition that we were already circulating. And one of the worst things that happened with that is they, they made it so that, you know, the corporate people can grow as many plants as they want. They used to they used to be capped at 5,000, and they just wrote in there, oh, you know what, well, whatever, we can you can get as many licenses as you want. So Steve, Ir- Steve Irwin, you know, he, I don't have any, I don't carry a drop of water for him ever, um, and any Democrat in Michigan, for that matter. Dana Nessel stood right there, and I asked her a question at her rally in Flint, Michigan, well, when she was running for uh, attorney or whenever, you know, during the election process. And she said that she would do whatever she could, which she said later she couldn't really do anything. But come on, you're the attorney general. You can pressure people. 
You can say things. You have power. But she didn't. She didn't pressure nobody, and we didn't get the automatic expungements. And I've heard rumors that an expungement in Michigan for marijuana charges in your past that you might want to get if you want to get a student loan or something could cost you upwards of $8,000. So there's nothing automatic about that. Um, and, you know, Governor Whitmer, I don't know what the hell she thinks she's accomplished. So they're having a virtual, um, you know, one of those basically virtual town hall type things uh, online. It's a virtual hash bash. And they've already, I don't know if it's them directly, but the people from the virtual hash bash has already criticized um, the gathering that we're going to have on the Diag. Now, you can criticize it all you want. What are you going to say? That we're being dangerous in the pandemic? Because there's been protests all throughout the pandemic. All right? Nobody ever says anything about any of those protests being super spreader events or whatever. So I don't want to hear about it. Um, and then what's the other thing you're going to say about it? I don't care. You know, you're going to say, oh, we already accomplished so much because that's what they're doing. They're sitting around talking about what was accomplished. They didn't accomplish any of it. Don't forget that the Democratic Party has been nothing but obstructionists when it comes to marijuana legalization in Michigan. There's never been an advocate in the Michigan government that was a Democrat that got us across any goal line. And in fact, every time we did a petition drive, they were obstructing in some way, shape, or form. And like I said, the biggest form of obstructionism comes from when they overseen the lobbyists basically write the Medical Marijuana Licensing Act, which they'll argue, oh, the, the Republicans, they're the ones that have the majority in the Congress in Michigan, so blame them. Oh, you know what, that's, that's awful convenient for you that that's the case when you know goddamn well that the Republicans are not for advocating for legalizing marijuana in any way, shape, or form. And as hard as I am on the Democrats, which I always will be harder on them than Republicans because they represent me more. Republicans, are, they don't represent me at all. You know, they're like, oh, let's keep marijuana illegal in perpetuity. <laughs> and of course, if it was legalized, only 10 corporations would be able to do all the work and make all the money because that's what they tried to do when we did a petition drive in 2016 under the banner of Responsible Michigan or whatever. So, what am I even talking about here? This video is getting kind of long. I just wanted to invite everybody to the hash bash and let you know that I'm going to try to speak at it. I don't know if I'm going to get to. It, it depends on what, you know, probably a lot of different factors or whatever. But I really am going to get up there and get in line and try my hardest to put in a, a, good, a word for, our, for us, for the caregivers. And by the way, I'm... For the record, I'm no longer a caregiver, all right? My patient's card's all expired, and I'm done. I, I'm not going to get scrutinized by the township. I'm not going to get my door kicked in by the uh, county sheriffs or the code enforcers or whoever's, whatever the deal is. I'm not a caregiver anymore, you know? The caregiving system w was a good concept, was a great idea, but the thing is, is it wasn't thought out that good. They wanted to keep it simple so it could be fought in courts through press and set precedences. That's what they said when they wrote it. Now, I don't agree with that. But at the time, the political climate was such that if you presented something with too many details, then you're going to get a, a lot more resistance because people didn't want to know what it looked like for marijuana to be legal at all. And I got to be honest, I never, I, do, I couldn't imagine that it, there would be things like dispensaries and stuff like that. But what ended up happening was, is we forged ahead with dispensaries. There wasn't any kind of rule in the law for them. And then we got busted and they started shutting them down. The Supreme Court ruled that they weren't in the law, so they're not allowed. And here we are getting pushed further underground being told we can no longer operate like we used to. Once again, even though we were doing nothing wrong, they just can't bear the fact that somebody out there gets to grow 72 plants. It's just way too mind-blowing for them. Well, I got news for you. I can take the same amount of lights that you would grow 72 plants under and grow 10 plants. 
I could grow one plant. I could hook all those lights up around one plant if I wanted to. <laughs> like, what is the point of counting plants? That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. But another attack on caregivers is the electric companies, DTE, and consumers. Well, if you pay more more than ten grand in uh, bills every year to them, they got a surprise for you. <laughs> they want you to do taxes and declare exactly how you uh, used your electricity or whatever. I'm not sure exactly how the form works or what is what it even is. Maybe I'll do a video about it as a, for an information thing, seeing how it's it's still tax time. By the way, they they punted the deadline for taxes a whole month. I think it's like May 17th when they're finally due. So I don't know if you want to look into that or not. Um, but caregivers are under attack and I'm going to the hash bash to put in a good word for us. I hope I didn't forget about anything. I'm driving and doing this video at the same time. So it's kind of weird. Um, I hope it sounds good and all, uh, all things considered, I'm really, I'm really you know, my back is against the wall here. I have to move because they're shutting the caregiving down. And it's not because I'm going to keep being a caregiver and I don't want to deal with them. It's that I don't want to live in a township that wants to to, to do this kind of uh, intimidation and, and coercion and, you know, extra scrutiny. Like I have, I have no patience to, to be around people like that. I don't even understand why there is people like that. Why do people care so much about what everybody else is doing? What is the big deal, you know? Why don't you leave everybody else alone? Let them be in their own, you know, like they're not bothering you. And by the way, let me, just to clear that up, these, care, these, um, these new amendments to ordinances calling, calling caregivers um, home occupations, which is not accurate because we're not allowed to be an occupation, and these ordinances are not formed by complaints from residents about their neighbors caregiving, you know, pissing them off or whatever. I mean, it's just not. That's just not the case. For example, I live in a neighborhood where everybody in the immediate area around me grows weed. They at least grow a couple plants in their backyard. A couple of them are caregivers couple of them just grow 12 plants but we, we got small yards so that's pretty much a whole yard full of plants and I mean nobody you know this is this is new we don't get we would we wouldn't expect to get harassed and nobody in the immediate area would expect anybody else in the immediate area in my neighborhood to really care about the neighbors you know next door's plants it's just not a big deal so I don't know man like that's all I got on this. Um, sorry if I kept you too long, but this is, a, this is a really dire situation for me. That's all I got. Uh, have a good one. Peace out. This is the brand, The Daily Dope Show.